let the second panel begin. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I am François Lafont. Let me first uh, thank Captain uh, Bezantakos and uh, Danai Bezantaku, the managing director, to give me for the third consecutive year the opportunity and the chance to moderate the ambassador's panel of their very well-established conference navigator in its 16th edition. I will not be long, uh, but this is a privilege because we are going to open a little bit the windows and to have a specific rule on other specificities. So the discussion of this year, the discussion of this year, of this year foreign ambassador panel is dedicated to the topic of ports in an international perspective. For those who were there last year, and you are a lot of them, after the Euro-Mediterranean dialogues and the climate change consequence on the shipping activities in 2015, we will this year focus on ports elsewhere and what are the main issues at stake. There are four good reasons. The first one is obvious, the key role ports play as gateways, in particular because maritime transport, and you know better than I, despite the gloomy situation, has increased all over the world. In such conditions, ports are an, are an essential element of the transport corridors and communication networks. Do not forget that ports, that's not an end in themselves. They are connected. So there are also some issues that we should look uh, behind. The permanent modernization and adaptation to ever bigger ships with AV and costly infrastructures will allow all operators to attempt to optimize their activities, reducing costs and re reducing time. Can we anticipate and foresee what may occur in ports in five, 10 years time? That's a question. How they will look like? That's another question. The second reason for the importance of ports is directly related to the increasing trade activities, generating also, and we didn't speak about that, but citizens are concerned, this is also more trafficking, counterfeiting, product frauds, uh, possible illegal migrations. What specific controls have to be carried out? What processes and by which legitimate authorities should they be operated? The security measures in the current international context uh, are important, but should be, should however guarantee that the circulation of goods will not be affected in the future. And you know that there are some protectionist uh, <coughs> intent in some countries. So how will tackle the authorities, the security dimension, and avoid increasing protectionist measures? The third dimension, this is of course, and we have seen that, this is a social impact and the employment. So how will this source of economic growth continue and under which conditions? And of course, in different countries, you will get maybe different answers. The last element, this is the, uh, maybe the more strategic intermodal dimension of the ports in their countries, beyond national activities on the European continent in a globalized world, how this is working at the European level. I know, and we will hear from the speaker, the ambassadors, that competition among, between ports is good. But there are also some side effects of that, and I hope that we are going to discuss. So again, thank you so much, Excellencies, for your participation. Um, I will ask first the Italian ambassador, Excellence uh, Maras, to take the floor. Uh, of course, he has a long experience. He has been director uh, in the Italian uh, Foreign Affairs Ministry for the Mediterranean, the countries of the Mediterranean. He has been ambassador uh, in Malta. He has been director general for global affairs. He has been also close to uh, Deputy Prime Minister of Italy and then Minister. So you have a long experience and Italy has a, a certain number of important ports. So please take the floor and explain if possible how it's going on in Italy. Merci. Merci. 
Merci beaucoup, François. Thank you very much for inviting me here, and uh, let me express my congratulations for this event. I'm happy to be here because I'm very interested in uh, the issues which you are dealing with, and because I believe that there is a lot of room of cooperation that we have to exploit between Italy and Greece. The EU was created, we don't have to forget this, on a bilateral basis. France and Germany, coal and steel. Then we have enlarged it and introduced a more ambitious, uh, more ambitious goals to it. But we have forgotten how important the bilateral dimension, the intra-bilateral dimension in the EU, uh, the, the importance of the intra-bilateral dimension. And being here as the ambassador of Italy, I've been here for a year, I soon realized that uh, I'm not talking about ports now, I'm talking about a general framework. Uh, I soon realized that uh, Greeks and Italians, uh, that was well known to me, go along very well together. But we say, you say, una faccia, una razza, but then uh, if I put my glasses on and I look at what we do, uh, there is not much that we do compared to what we could do. We are like uh, lovers who enjoy to make love, but we, have, we don't have offsprings. And I'm looking uh, thoroughly at our relations in order to find all the sectors where we could improve our cooperation. And I guess this is a, a good one. One of the areas in which there are wide margins of cooperation is the maritime sector. We are two relevant maritime clusters. The Italian merchant fleet is the second in the EU, the third fleet among the G20 countries, and the fourth in the world. Italy holds first place in the ranking of the main fleets of ferries and row row packs. What can we do? Cooperate to create a Mediterranean maritime conglomerate able to compete in attractiveness with the Northern European port system in order to become the main gateway for goods shipped to Europe, which mainly come from the East, via the Suez Canal. To do so, we have to strengthen our national port system to align the, our fleets to the reality of our ports. We have to modernize the infrastructure system of the ports, process which is underway in both countries. Thirdly, we have to support the construction of an efficient Balkan and Southern European railway line to Central Europe. And finally, we have to focus with commitment on intermodality. The synergies between Italy and Greece are possible and indeed advisable. The construction of an integrated system would help increasing efficiency, the quality of services, and the volumes shipped. The same will happen if we work and invest in the development of our peculiarities, transshipment, short sea shipment, and cabotage and on the efficiency of logistics from our ports, both Italian and Greek. We should also work together in the sector of private marinas by connecting them in order to make them more efficient and competitive at reasonable prices. Our value added is, our value added is, is quality, both here and in Italy. Therefore, we welcome a more close cooperation 
between our companies, for intervening in key sector, sectors such as the modernization of rail and road logistics in Greece. Italian and Greek partnerships can cooperate to exploit opportunities in the logistics services sector also linked to ports and to invest in the management of the Greek road infrastructure. All of these are interconnected activities that could lead to a better, much more efficient and integrated system of transportation on land and at sea. And there it comes to me uh, an analogy. We see the same thing here as what we see in the energy sector, in the infrastructure, in the transportation and distribution of energy. We need to have our system, our southern system, because if we rely, I'm talking about energy, but I think the same would go for, uh, for uh, our ports. If we rely from uh, energy imported from the north, the prices we will be paying here would be higher than those that we would be paying if we had energy uh, delivered directly to us. The maritime intermodality offers also a solution to reduce the environmental impact of shipping activities and make transportation of goods more sustainable. It is important to develop the motorways of the sea, decongesting the roads by reducing the traffic, thus reducing the levels of CO2. We have to work together to develop modern and environmentally friendly transport technologies, not only maritime. Bigger ships, more efficient engines, and intelligent management of speed would enable a reduction of 50% in CO2 emissions by 2050. The use of alternative fuels like LNG could further increase the environmental sustainability of maritime transportation. We are about in Italy to approve a strategic framework that entails the creation of LNG deposit facilities for maritime traffic on the Adriatic. We must not only look at the maritime dimension, refueling or bunkering, but it is necessary to extend the use of this fuel also to the equipment for the operation on land, docks activities and refueling of the trucks used to connect the ports to the inland terminals. For the development of Italian ports, and this is my last point, it is necessary, according to the National Strategic Plan for Port Activities and Logistics of 2015, first, to select the key ports to focus on, in particular those included in the TNT networks, the trans-European networks transport, or those related to priority projects of the European Commission or to projects eligible for financial aid from the European Investment Bank. Two, to concentrate investments for the Italian transshipment on one or two major ports on which to attract the interest of large shipping companies with operations similar to the one conducted in Greece for the Piraeus port with Costco. The other ports should develop mainly on the domestic market. Three, to redirect the focus of the ports of the northeast, Venice, Trieste, to central and eastern Europe and on routes to and from Asia, while the ports of the Tyrrhenian Sea should retain their principal vocation to the West Mediterranean and the Atlantic. Fourth, to develop a passenger tourism traffic in an increasing integrated way between our two countries. We should offer, be able to offer, the possibility of buying, by buying only one travel ticket to visit Rome, Venice, Athens, and other places in Greece. Fifth, to develop policies for greater efficiency in the ports by introducing new procedures to reduce the transit time of goods in ports, preparation of paperwork, custom procedures, handling, and organization of convoys. Privileging, privileging whether possible, the rail transport to the, uh, for the goods to final destination by ensuring to achieve the volumes in and out of the harbor in order to make the investment profitable through the removal of technical barriers to the railway port handling, the last mile problem. 
promoting the use of the motorways of the sea, Adriatic, Tyrrhenian, and Ionian, to relieve congestion on land, enhancing interventions, tangible or intangible, to integrate different ports, logistics systems, and inland terminals, increasing the depth of the seabed and widening the land areas in ports. Finally, in our Italian ports, we should also support research, development and technological innovation, increase the energy efficiency, improve the financing and the management of the investments by using also the resources generated inside the port system, and restructure the governance model of the Italian ports by implementing the recently approved uh, August this year, legislation transforming the 24 port authorities into 15 clusters of ports responsible for the administration of more than 50 ports. I thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Excellence uh, uh, Maras, for the presentation. Now I will turn to uh, a country which is far from uh, Italy, this is uh, Korea. Uh, I'm very delighted to uh, ask you to go to the floor. You have also a presentation, uh, so we will try to keep that for 10 minutes, and then after we will have a, a questions, okay. uh, answer question session. So the, you have the floor, uh, Excellence uh, Han. Uh, you have been uh, based in uh, Geneva for a long time, close to the international organization, so that means that you understand well also the International Maritime Organization uh, linked to the UN. Then you, uh, you have been also uh, in different uh, uh, countries, such as in, uh, in the US, where you were uh, first secretary, uh, uh, in, then after in Nigeria, and then in, in uh, um, second secretary also in the US. So you have a, a long experience. You've been director general for overseas Koreans and consular affairs bureau, so that means you have a global view of the interest of your country. So please, uh, you have the floor. Thank you. All right. First of all, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this prestigious forum uh, organized by Navigator. And also, the, uh, uh, thank you for giving me some chance to introduce uh, one of the uh, very uh, important port uh, in Northeast Asia, uh, which is located in, in Korea. And uh, I would like to briefly uh, introduce uh, uh, the, uh, our Busan port. Busan is uh, the second uh, biggest uh, city in Korea, and also is the biggest port uh, in, in the Korean Peninsula. Well, the, the catchphrase is uh, the global hub port beyond the borders in Northeast Asia. Well, the, uh, the location of uh, the, uh, Busan is uh, uh, strategically located between China and uh, Japan, and uh, also the, uh, uh, is, has uh, easy access to Southeast Asia. It has uh, uh, located a short distance uh, path towards all continents from Northeast Asia. And uh, in case of last year, 55 uh, container carriers in total used Busan as a treatment uh, hub. And the 29 carriers handled more than uh, 10,000 TEO treatment uh, uh, moves and the 19 carriers handled more than 100,000 uh, TO transshipment uh, moves, and then eight carriers, more than two million uh, TO transshipment uh, moves. Well, uh, the connectivity, Busan uh, port has uh, 455 services a week. Uh, in case of North, East, North and South America, it has uh, 111 services a week, Europe, 32.5, and uh, Oceania, 26, Africa, 4.5. In case of Japan, they had 79 services a week. China, 62.5 services. Southeast Asia, 105. Russia, 9.5. Middle East, 25.5 services a week. Busan port has uh, two hubs. Uh, the traditional hub is uh, North Port, 
and the new port is uh, in the uh, left hand side. Uh, it is now the uh, top five global container port, and it is a top three uh, global transshipment port. And uh, it serves to 150 nations and uh, uh, more than 500 ports. Well, if you see this uh, chart, uh, the container transshipment port in the world, uh, number one transshipment port is uh, Singapore, and uh, second is Hong Kong, and the third is Busan, and uh, Dubai, and uh, the Tanjung Pelopas in Malaysia. And in case of 2014, it handled more than 18 million uh, TEUs. Among them, the more than 50 uh, percent of the uh, cargo is transshipment cargoes. Uh, arrivals, uh, vessel arrivals, uh, uh, yeah, is the, uh, this chart shows that uh, the vessel arrivals uh, by ship type and uh, ocean and coastal. In case of container ships, uh, uh, it uh, handled uh, 333,000, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 30,277 ships and 333 million uh, tons uh, in case of 2015. And in other like, uh, ships, like uh, cruise ships and the bunker ships, uh, it handled 26,624 uh, ships. Uh, and in total, uh, it handled 98,000 uh, ships and uh, 359 million tons. It's a new port, uh, those port, uh, traditional port. It has uh, four container terminal operators and 6.6 uh, million TU it handled in case of last year. And uh, it has 21 verses. In case of new port, uh, it has now 500 container terminal operators and 12.9 uh, million TUs it handled. And it has uh, 23 verses, but it is now in the process of expansion. This uh, graph shows that uh, until 2011, uh, the uh, traditional port, uh, North Port, uh, uh, was dominant in handling the cargoes, but uh, from 2012, new port uh, have overtaken. So in 1915, uh, last year, uh, 2015, last year, uh, the volume of the cargo handled in North Port uh, was 66 uh, percent, and uh, North Port is 34 percent. In case of North Port, we have uh, four uh, terminal operators. Among them, uh, 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 already two uh, operators are in integrated and is in the process of uh, integ integration of whole operators uh, for the efficiency of the port. And in case of new port, it has uh, 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 now 23 verses, but it is to be expanded uh, up to 45 verses. Uh, after North Port, uh, integration. Uh, this table shows the, uh, the terminal operators. And the Busan port uh, throughput uh, from 2010 to 2015, the volume has been uh, continuously increased. And in case of 2015, the total volume uh, it handled is 19 million TUs. Uh, it is increased 4.2% uh, uh, compared to uh, the previous year. And among them, uh, more than 52% uh, is uh, transshipment uh, cargoes. It's a uh, domestic uh, container market uh, share of Busan is that. In case of a uh, local uh, market, uh, Busan port uh, uh, has 64% uh, of share. And the next one is uh, Incheon, 16%, and uh, Gwangyang, 12%, uh, and etc. However, in case of uh, transshipment uh, cargoes, uh, uh, Busan has uh, the 94% uh, of share. Uh, this uh, table shows that uh, sort of uh, by nations, uh, 
uh, with uh, Busan. Number one uh, country is China, and uh, number two is US, and number three is Japan. All three uh, the, uh, uh, countries uh, is composed of 46.9% uh, of uh, local cargo and 61% uh, of uh, transshipment cargo. And then Mexico, Russia, Australia, UAE, and Germany is following. And the throughput by port, uh, the number one uh, the port uh, uh, of business is uh, Tianjin in China, and the second is Qingdao. Uh, number three is uh, Shanghai and uh, Long Beach in US, and the Dalian, China, many Chinese ports, and the Vancouver, Los Angeles, uh, Ningbo, Savannah, uh, Georgia, and uh, uh, Manjalino of Mexico. Well, the uh, uh, services of Busan port in 2016 uh, is uh, trade route, uh, we have the uh, big increase, 16.9 percent. Uh, that means, uh, as I explained, it's 445 services a week. Uh, and the deep sea route, 19.1 uh, percent increase, and the feeder route is 15.5 uh, percent increase. It showed. From 2015 to 2016 uh, period, the global port container volume uh, shows that the, uh, uh, in total, sh Shanghai was number one in the world, and uh, uh, Singapore was number two, and the Shenzhen was number three, and the Ningbo or Chosan was number four, and the Busan was number five. And thereafter, Hong Kong, Qingdao, Guangzhou, uh, Dubai, and Tianjin follows. This graph shows that the uh, well, the, uh, the increase of uh, the container volumes. As you see, the, uh, uh, reflecting the global recess, uh, the increase uh, volume is decreasing. Uh, the red line shows the uh, average uh, performance of uh, world top 10 port, and the blue one is the uh, performance of uh, yeah, Busan port. And compared to other Competing port uh, Busan uh, was uh, well up, but the, uh, as you see, uh, the, uh, the trend shows uh, decreasing uh, of the, uh, the port volumes, uh, decreasing of the uh, uh, increase rate. In case of us, uh, we have uh, the uh, free trade agreement with uh, so many countries. Maybe I think uh, Korea is. Um, uh, world number one or number two country uh, which has a uh, free trade agreement with uh, uh, so many other countries. We have a FTA with the US, Canada, Mexico, and the EU. And uh, in case of last year, we had the FTA with China and the Vietnam. So uh, as a trading country, uh, more than like 80% of the uh, trade uh, trading countries in the world, we have, we have a FTA. Uh, this uh, the chart shows that the, uh, after the FTA, how the, uh, the volume of uh, the trade has been increased. Uh, now, the, uh, we are also uh, building some kind of uh, uh, the distributed logistics park, distribuc, uh, just uh, beside the uh, new port. Uh, Undong District Park and the North Container Park is now uh, under construction for a uh, new district park in, in Busan Port. And uh, it's total uh, 9.4 million square meter. And uh, the, we are providing some competitive land and incentives for uh, pre-trade zones. And the, in that zones, uh, we have uh, manufacturing and assembly uh, the functions, separations, labeling, inspection, and packaging. And uh, the part of shipbuilding or construction is made, food, beverage, clothes, etc., cetera, uh, is going on. And uh, uh, they uh, provide a uh, uh, very uh, cheap price uh, for rent, uh, rental. And the lease term can be extended to up to 50 years. And the uh, conditions uh, you can see in the basic lease is uh, the 0 0.48 uh, uh, dollar per month per square meter, and preferential the, uh, rate is 0 0.32 uh, 
US dollar per month per square meter. And in addition to that, uh, they uh, suggest uh, and they provide uh, some uh, like a reduction in the lease rate uh, when some company invest uh, more than five million US dollar or more. Uh, discount rate is fifty percent for three years, and uh, if they invest more than ten million, uh, discount rate is the same, but the period is five years. Now uh, in that district park, uh, many uh, foreign companies. Uh, uh, they are in operation. Uh, in case of Japan, 42 companies, China, 20, US, uh, and uh, Singapore, uh, many other countries, they have their uh, business there. Uh, Busan, among any other uh, the, uh, North Eastern park, um, park <coughs> port in Northeast Asia, uh, it has uh, the uh, lion's share uh, between uh, Asia and the Panama Canal. 60% of all uh, Asia Panama services stop in Busan. So the uh, Busan port, uh, uh, they are trying to diversify its portfolio and to expand its largest net network and strengthen its uh, competitiveness. So uh, this effort, they would like to uh, enter into the global market and to become a global integrated logistics company and the global terminal operators, they, uh, they are uh, in the process. Uh, future opportunities, we have three future opportunities. First one is uh, uh, Busan wish to be a gate of the Eurasia. You, you may see the, uh, uh, from Busan to Europe, there are many uh, uh, connection uh, routes. Uh, through railroad, uh, we have uh, Trans-China railroad, Trans-Mongolian railroad, and uh, Trans-Siberian railroad we can also use. And in addition to that, as a uh, uh, result of global warming, now the uh, northern uh, sea route uh, is to be developed. And if we use uh, the Arctic route, we can like, uh, uh, save uh, almost 7,400 uh, kilom kilometers in distance, and we, we can save 10 days uh, for our delivery from Busan to Notre Dame in Europe. And the uh, second uh, part of a future opportunity is a green port. Well, the uh, new port and the, that area is uh, uh, very much concerned about like, uh, the, uh, uh, the global warmings, and that they are also very much concerned about the air pol uh, pollutant uh, uh, things. So uh, they are developed uh, based on the uh, green idea, and the CAMP uh, alternative marine uh, power supply, and uh, it is uh, to be supplied to the ships, uh, and uh, they would like to contain the using of the uh, uh, heavy fuel oil in generating electricity in, in the ship. In case of uh, yard tractors, uh, they are now using all the uh, LNG gases, and uh, uh, no more the heavy fuel oils. Well, the third part of the future opportunities is uh, ubiquitous port. Uh, well, using uh, the automatic uh, recognition systems like a radio uh, frequency identification and uh, GPS systems and uh, some uh, software of real-time information, uh, we make uh, the Busan as a uh, ubiquitous port. So uh, if a container come into the port, from that time on to the final destination, uh, yeah, we can easily trace uh, where it is located. So you can see uh, in the cranes and uh, in the old containers and uh, even in the trucks. Uh, and uh, the, uh, in the office, they can easily uh, find out the location of the, uh, the freight. Well, based on that, the, uh, uh, we would like to develop uh, our uh, the port in Busan and uh, hope uh, many of you can fully utilize our facilities. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Han, for this uh, very impressive presentation. 
not just because, I mean, you have been able to do 15 minutes for 30 slides with so many information, so this is a, a very good job for a moderator. Uh, and, but the second thing is because the, the photo and all the information you gave us uh, bring the European ports in the global dimension. So I'm very happy now to uh, give the floor to uh, the third panelist, who is uh, Ambassador Girkins, who is Port Ambassador Antwerp Port Authority, who used to be, uh, I mean, he's still a diplomat, uh, a Belgian diplomat, uh, used to be in, in, uh, in Netherlands, so you know very well one of the main competitors of uh, Antwerp. Uh, this is Rotterdam. Uh, you've been also in Los Angeles. And like our predecessor uh, ambassador, you've been also close to two prime ministers. Uh, so you have a global picture of international trade, uh, uh, what's going on. Please, you have the floor for 10 minutes, and then after we will come back uh, uh, to have the question uh, answers. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, um, dear friends. Thanks for the invitation uh, to the Port of Antwerp. Uh, as I was introduced as a diplomat, I must confess that I'm a former uh, diplomat. I, I left the diplomatic service two years ago, and I joined your community, the maritime world. So it's always a pleasure for me to meet my former colleagues, but it's certainly a big pleasure to, to be in a, in a forum of maritime and port people. Um, I have a short presentation that will certainly not uh, give uh, more than 10 minutes. Uh, two words about the port of Antwerp. We're the second uh, largest port in Europe. Um, there is another port in Holland that is a bit, a bit bigger. Uh, we are the second fastest growing uh, port in Europe. The first is Piraeus, and that's a record we don't want to touch, but the other record we still aim for. So the second port in Europe, uh, we did the turnover of two, more than 200 million tons uh, cargo handling uh, last year. As you see, more than half in containers. The small graph on the left side is even more important. You will see that the ingoing and outgoing vessels are, are in balance. So Port of Antwerp, uh, if this is a community of shippers, you will certainly be interested. You cannot only bring your ship to Antwerp and unload it, but you can take it out of Antwerp, load it. So empty containers and empty ships are, are less likely in, in Antwerp than in any other European port, which makes uh, one of the, the secrets of the success of the port of Antwerp. The same uh, numbers again. Uh, you see that port of Antwerp is a, a multiple uh, purpose port. Uh, containers, like everywhere, of course, is the, the, the main uh, part of it. But liquid bulk uh, is very important for the port of Antwerp as well. Containers, uh, which is, of course, the growth segment of maritime traffic. We reached almost 10 million TU last year. We feel pretty comfortable that we will reach the 10 million uh, TU uh, this year. And there again, you see loaded, unloaded. It's a pretty nice balance. Um, to show off this chart, uh, Port of Antwerp, as I said, the second fastest growing port in Europe. In our range, the Northwest European range, we were by far the fastest growing port in 2015. I will not uh, go into details uh, about the others, but you will see we had a, a tremendous 7% uh, growth in a maritime uh, container market, which is kind of stable. There's not much growth in world uh, trade. There's not much growth in, 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 in container trade. But we managed uh, uh, to grow, so taking market shares of uh, the other ports in, in Northwest Europe. That trend in 2015 is confirmed in 2016, these are numbers for six months. We already have numbers for nine months, but Port of Antwerp again is growing. Um, when I say that unloading and loading, that balance is very important uh, for the Port of Antwerp, another big uh, uh, factor of, of the Port of Antwerp's uh, success is that we are basically an inland port. We're 80 kilometers from the sea. But at the same time, we can be reached by the largest container vessels uh, that exist in the world. So we have the advantages of a seaport. We have accessibility for all uh, major vessels that are. At the same time, we're much closer uh, to customers, to producers in, in, in Europe. And also, as you see there, the highest handling productivity in Europe 
It's been uh, studied uh, independently, but the performance of the port of Antwerp in port uh, productivity is the highest in the Northwest range. Uh, but again, I do not want to compare with Piraeus because I'm afraid that uh, but we will be happy to lose to Piraeus there. Um, for a port, it's important to have connections, of course, with the foreland, uh, international maritime connections. You see there the port of Antwerp is serving 1,300 ports worldwide. We are the major European port on almost all continents, except uh, for Asia, where we are still uh, lagging behind some of our competitors. Foreland is important, hinterland is even more important. Uh, when you attract a cargo, you have, of course, to be able to get the, the cargo into the market uh, to your destinations. You see that the port of Antwerp, we have 925 inland uh, waterway barge calls per week, which is pretty impressive. And if you see at the map, we are close to the major European uh, markets and production centers. The same goes for rail uh, destinations. We have per day 250 loaded trains in the port of Antwerp, connecting us to the whole of Europe, including this country. The maritime uh, business is important for ports, uh, but as the previous speaker mentioned, maritime uh, um, activity does not create that much added value, does not create always that much uh, uh, labor. And then Port of Antwerp, we have an answer to that. We have a large logistical complex in, in, in and around the port area. I think we are the largest logistical platform in uh, Europe. If you see the, the, the storage, the covered storage space that we have of over 6 million uh, square meters, which is an amazing number, and I believe that is uh, larger than the total of all our competitors uh, together. But what you see there, it's not just uh, roofs with, 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 uh, uh, with stuff in, under the roofs, but there's a logistical activity. When we have containers coming from Asia, for example, we unload those containers. We treat the, 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 the goods that are in it, be it sports shoes or, or, or smartphones, Within the port area, we have the logistical treatment that we make those products ready for the markets before they leave the port of Antwerp. But it's a huge uh, economic uh, uh, meaning uh, to the port activity. The third element after maritime and uh, logistics is the petrochemical uh, activity in Antwerp. Antwerp is the largest petrochemical cluster in Europe, and we are number two after Houston worldwide. And just some names the largest petrochemical uh, companies in the world are all based in Antwerp. The three things together, the synergy between maritime cargo handling, the logistics, uh, value-added logistics, and the petrochemical industry gives us together, and this is a pretty impressive number, over 20 billion euro of economic value in the port of Antwerp, which is but more than 6% of the Belgian uh, GDP, with employment 150,000 people. And when I listen to the story about Piraeus, then you see a port, Piraeus for Greece, Antwerp for Belgium. It's really an, an engine for, for economic growth. And you can use that engine as a port by going beyond the port uh, mission that you have. It's also a motivator, of course. It's not just uh, business. It's also about people and uh, prosperity. My final slide, um, which is kind of an invitation. Uh, anyone who wants to visit the port of Antwerp, please be welcome. We will show you an impressive port, but also an impressive port building, which is just brandly newly opened uh, just a month ago, I believe. So uh, welcome to, to Antwerp. I'm here for the rest of the meeting. And don't hesitate. We can talk. And uh, if we can do business, good for Paris and good for Antwerp. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Excellence uh, Gherkens, for this presentation. I have some questions before going to the audience and to have uh, uh, interaction. I have some questions to you and to the uh, South Korean uh, ambassador. The first is, you have developed, you have explained uh, how your port is, is doing well. Uh, I have read that one of these uh, dimensions maybe is a proactive um, activity in a sense with collaboration in other ports. Maybe you could say a few words on 
how you manage agreements, memorandum of understanding with, uh, I have seen, uh, to be precise, in West Africa, in Côte d'Ivoire, San Pedro, or you've got also the port of Bandar Abbas in Iran, some uh, agreements. So this is a strategic uh, orientation of your port, and maybe this is uh, useful to get uh, more information. Uh, then, uh, to the uh, uh, Excellence Anne, uh, of course, uh, again, I'm not an expert, but uh, uh, I, I have read that the high-end, the, the big high-end shipping uh, 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 has been bankrupt. I mean, uh, uh, what are the consequences of that? Uh, maybe ship owners here in the, in the audience would like to know what the current state, what's, what's going on, and if there are any uh, uh, perspective on this side. And the second is, this is more geopolitical, and this is more the business I used to do more uh, uh, every day. Uh, of course, we have spoken about the, the cost of investment uh, in, in, in Greece, in Athens, in the port. Um, I understand this is very good because of the economy, because they are going to have a, a, a strategy, a global strategy. But as Korean, uh, um, maybe you have a different perspective, or how do you see this Chinese uh, sea road, sea, sea belt sea road, which is also in Italy. I've seen that the Costco is investing in uh, Savona, 20% of the port, and uh, in other ports. So how do you see that picture? Is it a problem or not? And uh, because we could consider that in Europe we should be capable to have a better coordinated way of thinking a maritime policy and ports infrastructure. I mean, I've seen uh, in September of this year, there is the uh, a report from the uh, European Court of Auditors from, at the European level, who mentioned that uh, because of the structural funds were used and given to ports, it was not used in a proper way. I mean, one third of the European invested in the ports were just wasted because it was not uh, uh, thought in a comprehensive uh, way. So I'm saying that not to criticize, but because of the European money has been misused in a certain sense in the ports, I presume that the European institutions will have two solutions, or do not give any more money to the ports, and I don't think it will be the solution, or to have a more European approach in the ports coordination. So I know that competition is good, uh, and, and we discussed that with the uh, Antwerp. I mean, this is good to have Rotterdam very close because you are obliged to innovate, to be more active. But there is no uh, problem in these competitions. So that's my first question, and then we will go to the audience. Please, do you want to one? Well, talking about uh, port activity beyond uh, maritime uh, cargo and, and, and petrochemical and logistic stuff. Indeed, uh, we do international cooperation with the Antwerp Port Authority. We have two subsidiaries. One is a port training center, and the other one is a port of Antwerp International. Uh, what we do in Antwerp, we give training to port professionals from all over the world uh, for the past 40 years. That has been an investment in people relations as much as an investment in simply transfer of our knowledge, of our experience. And if we look at people who came to Antwerp for, for port training, it's mid-level, high-level training. Then you see very often they go back to their countries where they make nice careers, end up at top positions. They're CEOs of one of the top 10 ports in the world that have been to the port of Antwerp training center when they were younger in their careers. So it's a long-term uh, investment, of course, that we do not only because we want to do good, but we believe in investing in people and people who will also then later maybe return uh, us in that investment. The other part is the port of Antwerp International, the small uh, subsidiary of the port of Antwerp. It's playing an active role in consulting, in participation, in, in ports, uh, and port-related industry all over the world. You mentioned some examples like uh, 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 in Brazil, in India, we're in Vietnam, we're in Congo, the Ivory Coast, in, in Oman, and there also we are first very often asked by foreign governments or government bodies of port-related authorities to share our knowledge, what we have, and, and we have a substantial knowledge uh, that we can share. 
And then, of course, for us, we look uh, in the long term as well that we can expect uh, from our investment, from our consultancy, uh, that we put not only Antwerp on the map, but also uh, create relations that will be beneficial in the longer term because it's not profit-driven, uh, but it's a broader picture and a creation of, of long-term relationships. Thank you so much. Excellence? Yes. Uh, you asked me two questions. Uh, first one is uh, the Hanji shipping company uh, cases, and the second one is uh, Chinese purchase of uh, the stake in the Prius. Uh, the first part, uh, as you may be uh, well aware, uh, the Hanjin is now the under uh, legal management of the court. And uh, the fate of the uh, Hanjin shipping is to be uh, made based on the uh, uh, decisions. And uh, that's why uh, now uh, in Korean court, uh, they uh, analyze uh, in many uh, aspects. And uh, well, they are based on that, they, uh, it will be decided that whether it is to be survived or whether it is to be sold out to foreign uh, or domestic uh, companies, or whether uh, some portion is to be sold out to some companies and the remaining part is to be survived or something like that. So various options, I think, uh, is uh, uh, on the table, I think. Uh, hope uh, the decision is to be made uh, uh, sooner or later. And uh, regarding that, uh, in case of Korean government, uh, uh, the ministries, uh, they have a regular uh, the meetings, uh, how to contain negative effect, and uh, how to like, uh, uh, create uh, their competitiveness in the uh, shipping area. Uh, well, I think uh, Hanjin <coughs> made some uh, mistakes, uh, we understand. Uh, and also, the, it became the victim of the uh, current uh, the, uh, economic, global economy and the, uh, the recession in the maritime industries. So uh, the, the, uh, the experts in Korea, they think that the, uh, the characteristics of uh, the maritime industries has always some kind of cycles. Uh, now it's in the nadir, but yeah, sometimes it may go up. So all those kind of strategic aspect is to be uh, duly considered. Uh, in case of uh, Chinese uh, uh, the, the purchase of uh, Pierre's port, as a the, uh, uh, foreign diplomat, uh, it's, uh, I think, inappropriate to, to comment uh, on any, any deals uh, with uh, some other countries. And, uh, uh, I have uh, 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 I'm not the appropriate person uh, to comment that. Uh, I think uh, it's kind of like a uh, uh, result of the marriage uh, between two needs. The needs from the Chinese uh, uh, part to find out uh, some hub port in European continent. And from the, uh, uh, the Greek part, uh, the need for the uh, uh, bring out more uh, investment in their port. So I think uh, it seems to be a kind of like uh, uh, win-win uh, solutions. Uh, uh, having said that, having said that, yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, port is very important uh, infrastructure in uh, every country, so in case of every country. And uh, uh, various aspects should be considered. Uh, like a strategic, political, economic, and the cultural uh, aspect. And uh, do not just uh, simply focus on the uh, economic uh, aspect at all. All those uh, elements is to be uh, yeah, harmoniously uh, yeah, intertwined. I think uh, some kind of virtuous uh, cycle of the development uh, is to be made. So I hope uh, that kind of like uh, uh, harmony is to be uh, yeah, made uh, in, in case of Prius. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I asked the question because I remember that uh, in the US a few years ago, uh, an Arabic country wanted to buy a port and uh, uh, the Secretary of State at this time, uh, Hillary Clinton, said, no way, there is national security dimension there, so this is not possible. So that's why I ask you, because uh, maybe the problem could uh, come back uh, in, in other uh, cases. Uh, 
maybe there are some questions in, in the room, uh, and, and maybe I will, I don't want to ask the Italian ambassador to answer the one I have in mind, uh, but maybe somebody from Greece could answer me uh, in a certain sense. The, I have read in the uh, in newspaper that uh, in Italy, so I don't want to mention the port, uh, uh, there is a big activity, of course, of containers arriving in the port, and there is just 1.5% of the containers which have checked. So that means there is, behind that, the control, which is effectively done on 1.5. The, the, the numbers are, are, are great. Uh, there is uh, 10 million of containers arriving uh, in this port, and there is 150,000 which are controlled. So that means they control the papers and they control what's inside. I'm a normal citizen. I'm not a shipping guy. I have some concern about that. Is it this, this kind of data that we have also in, uh, in Greece, or this is a normal business? I mean, maybe Antwerp uh, could uh, uh, give me these numbers. If this is a normal business, we have to make sure to reinforce the control and the securities, because at a certain point, citizens will understand what's going on, <coughs> and because of the, I mean, the globalized world, what's going on, they will ask for more security and more safety. So, I mean, this is maybe a problem for the shipping world because this is cost, more cost, more time in ports, more, pap more papers, more documentation to fill up, and so on and so on. But don't forget that behind that, there are citizens. And uh, in the time, the current time, with the protectionist, populist people around everywhere, we have to make sure to prepare things in order to counter, counter uh, uh, do these kind of, of things. What's, what's the situation in uh, Antwerp? And maybe if a Greek could give me an answer, is this the 1.5 control, the normal figure? Um, well, it depends. Um, first, all containers coming in, going out, are, are controlled uh, automatically on, on nuclear materials. And that's 100% uh, tight control. Of course, there can be other stuff in containers uh, which are illegal or, or dangerous, uh, but then uh, checking every container, opening every container would bring trade to a standstill. So that's also not an option. So I'm not the, the, the representing the, the government and the law enforcement government, how they uh, proceed with, with uh, containers, uh, control or other goods, uh, but I believe that uh, the, the most illegal uh, Things are, are not always, well, maybe dangerous for health, but not dangerous in terms of terrorism. It's like, like drugs, uh, uh, which uh, regularly are, are surfaced and, and are detected in ports uh, all over the world. So the, the system works, uh, but asking for, for uh, a container, uh, every container to control them, then I believe it's like a container, uh, uh, controlling every car on the road, uh, the road would, would, would be at a standstill. So, but I, I would. Like the real experts uh, say more about it, but uh, uh, that's just my short answer. Could I get one Greek answer to my question? So nobody is aware about the. Please. Do we have a microphone? Yes. Hi, I'm uh, Captain Kakuris from Danao Shipping. Uh, one of the biggest uh, container tonnage providers uh, worldwide. And I can assure you that uh, the figures that you presented us, I doubt about their source. Uh, I can tell you that there are a lot of uh, both security and safety uh, controls prior loading and discharging of the containers. And I can assure you that uh, in most of the cases, our uh, vessels uh, transporting the containers from one place to the other and all around the world, uh, they are uh, pretty safety and secure. And I don't think that uh, any in this room or uh, in our country, in Europe in general, can doubt that uh, we provide safety and security from uh, the cargo transported. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm better uh, unsure. 
Uh, any other question in the room? I've got the authorization. Uh, two questions, correct? Two questions. I repeat, my name is Zupas Evangelos. I would like to ask the Honorable Ambassador of Korea the matter of Yansin shipping. We are friends for so many years. We had good relations. Now you have that incident of, let's say, bankruptcy. You, your company had on time charter many Greek vessels, and there is a difficulty to collect the contracted charter payment. Do you have any idea what is going to be done? There are some cases in the court. Some cases are pending. Can you give us any clue what it will be happening? Thank you. About Hanjin, the, the company that bankrupted, mm -hmm. the Korean container company, but I don't think that you will be having the numbers as an ambassador <laughs> because he was asking what is happening with all the mess they have created in the market with all this loss of money. I don't know if, if you know the case and if you can reply, but for sure you cannot know the exact numbers. Yep. Yes, but he's the ambassador of Korea and yeah, Greece, yeah, yeah. so... Yeah. I, I think uh, I uh, do not know in details, details of the, uh, the numbers uh, and uh, the uh, amount of money. Uh, however, uh, the, uh, after the incident, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, Korean government is uh, trying best uh, to contain the negative uh, aspect, and there are uh, there in in case of uh, the uh, shipping, it has uh, two aspects. The first one is uh, it should be operated in the market logic, the logic of the market. The second one is that the uh, shipping uh, uh, is a very uh, important uh, uh, the industry in any country, it's a very uh, strategic industry. So uh, uh, those uh, element is also important uh, uh, in the decision of uh, uh, our government and decision in the court. So based on that, the, uh, uh, the, uh, some, some kind of the decision is to be made. If uh, some kind of like uh, debt they have to pay, I think they have to pay, and uh, now the, uh, I understand that the uh, owner of the, uh, the Hanji ship uh, companies, uh, he uh, already uh, uh, promised to uh, provide some money uh, of his own, his own money for, uh, for the company. And uh, also uh, some kind of like uh, the, uh, the, uh, supporting uh, aid. Uh, from the government is considered, but I don't know the, uh, the, the details. However, the, uh, they, they do uh, best to contain any negative aspect. However, on the other hand, I think uh, if one company pays, there are other companies uh, who can benefit for that. And then the, uh, some companies may uh, lose their money, but on the other hand, I, I know that there are some companies, they benefit uh, as a result of the, uh, this failure. This is, this is the market. There will be also some opportunities for uh, companies because mm -hmm. there will be new possibilities mm -hmm. because of the iron uh, problem. Last question, if, uh, uh, if no. any. No. So uh, thank you so much, uh, ambassadors, for this uh, discussion. I hope that we uh, bring some uh, food for thoughts for the uh, uh, people in the, in the room. And, uh, Let's applaud them. them. Thank you very much. Thank you.